So we'll be starting in about two minutes. Thank you all for being here. Super loud cars. All right. Oh no! <laughs> Sorry. No, it's all good. It's funny. Um, hello everybody. We're we're about to get started right now. Just wanted to let you guys know that registration is open for CGMA. Uh, just started yesterday, so please uh, check it out. The theme for this term's registration is getting back to the basics. So it's more focusing on uh, foundation of drawing and design. And today we have the awesome Christy K, and her class is the art of color and light. So anyone interested in mastering color and light, this would be a great class to take. And uh, without further ado, I will pass it to you, Christy. Um, hello, hi. It's, uh, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Sorry, uh, one sec. I forgot to mention something. Um, if you guys have questions, feel free to ask them at any time. Uh, and then I will be relaying the questions back to Christy. You can type them up here on the questions box or the chat box. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let's click scroll through here. Mm. <laughs> all right. So super cute, Fanny. <laughs> um. Yeah. I guess. Uh. So I'm. My name's Christy. Um. Uh, I. I'm an artist. Uh. I. I guess I, I, I can start a little bit talking about myself and my background. Um, I grew up in Southern California, and I, I've been working um, in animation for, for about a year, so I'm kind of, kind of new to the industry. Um, I went to school at San Jose State University, and I studied animation and illustration, but specifically visual development. So, um, so yeah, I graduated a, two years ago. Uh, and and since then, I've been working at Sony Animation, and uh, this is my second show there. I was I was uh, my first show was Hotel Transylvania, which comes out actually came out last last night yesterday on Friday. So um, you guys should all go see it. And now I'm on I'm on a new Smurf project. It's called Get Smurfy. So <laughs> so yeah, cool. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Very awesome. So, yeah. Uh, these are some of images from a project that I worked on a couple years ago called the Dam Keeper. Mm -hmm. So I guess you can kind of scroll through these a little bit. Is that a good idea? 
Yeah, that sounds good. Is there a way to, can you see this, this folder here? I mean, this uh, menu here? No. Is there a way to get rid of that? Oh, okay. Just I don't on my see screen. the menu. Yeah, yeah. You're fine. Um, so these are, I'm not sure if, you're, if everyone's familiar with the Dam Keeper, but uh, it's a short film that was produced by, it was directed by two art directors from Pixar that wanted to make their own project, so they spent some a lot of their personal time developing the story and uh, brought on a lot of their, their friends and uh, other coworkers from Pixar and, um, and a lot of young artists to make this project happen. Um, and everything was volunteer. So, so yeah, so we worked on this and um, did the festivals and it did really well. It's a very charming story. <laughs> How long did you spend on these usually? So these were, I, my role on the project was a painter. So each frame on the project had to be painted, um, which is, it was kind of a tedious task. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, so this, like this one right here was an example of one of the frames. So like one frame like this might have taken um, like t 20 minutes or so, mm -hmm. and then but to do to do like hundreds of those together, it it adds up. Um, but yeah, so so it's maybe like 20 or 30 minutes just for one. Nice. This is a uh, so as a, as a painter, we were responsible for painting backgrounds as well as painting each frame of character animation. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the backgrounds. Um, yeah, if I go back a little bit. So, yeah, these are examples of what we would paint for the background. Uh, sometimes we would have to paint the same background at different times of day uh, so that they could control the um, the lighting and change the lighting in this within the same the same scene. Mm -hmm. um, this scene, they we were told to paint paint it in sun sunlight and then paint it as if uh, if it's like an overcast kind of a smoky layer, so that they could composite those together to, to change the lighting within the same shot. Um, mm -hmm. So, so we, we were responsible for the background and then also the animation of this of the sheep. Um, and I think <laughs> kind of silly, but kind yeah, of cute. I love yeah, I love this one. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> how did you uh, how did you get involved with the dam keeper? Um, how did you like start? working with them? Uh, so the, they, they sent out a, uh, a post on Facebook saying that they were working on this project and uh, they wanted to bring on some young, like some intern type of, a, of artists some, as painters. So, but they wanted them to be local. And at the time I was up at school in San Jose um, so they said, submit your portfolios, like please send us your stuff. So a bunch of students from our school submitted our, our portfolios and um, actually I think five or six students from our school ended up working as painters on the project. Oh, so, uh, so it was just like a really lucky that we were there, right time, right place, and uh, uh, we had, it was summertime so we had time to spare. No jobs, like it was the perfect, the perfect situation, and um, and yeah, 
everything worked out. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's cool. Did you guys primarily work uh, in Photoshop or what programs did you use? So for the the animation was all done in TV Paint, mm -hmm. and the painting was done all in Photoshop. So each frame was separated, like separate, separated as a different file, and then we would use load them into Photoshop and paint them separately. And then we used Adobe Bridge to scroll through the frames to see if they were animating correctly. Um, it was actually really helpful. Without Bridge, I think it would have taken a lot longer. Bridge has a really nice way of, uh, of scrolling um, through, through frames so that you can see it as a, like a sequence. Mm -hmm. So mostly, all the painting was done in Photoshop. But they did use 3D for some of the backgrounds um, and some of, the, like some of the camera angles. I see. So for something like this, we would be given, if we were in charge of painting the background, we would be given kind of a rough 3D model and we were told, and a lighting key, or a lighting, a color key from DICE, we were told, paint it according to this key, but in this certain time of day, and then, uh, so that was the background, and then we were told to paint a lighting key according to that background. Uh, so we would do one frame, probably like the first one, paint all the characters, and then we would paint every frame, um, so each of these separately. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. And just put it all together. And then we had a really great compositor. Um, he was, he was, he must have been 20, just a kid, but he was so talented. <laughs> and this was kind of cool. Uh, we had a special day. This was probably one of the most ambitious sequences in the film. Um, so we had a dedicated day called Gear Day, and we each were given uh, a gear or two to paint the f each frame of the gear. Uh, so if we scroll through, as they're turning, we had to paint each frame of the turning gear. Oh, wow. So, so then we put them all together. Uh, it, it took more than one day. I think they, they kind of uh, jumped the gun there. But <laughs> it, <laughs> we put them all together, and it was fun to see something that we all like, clearly created um, like as a team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. These are so awesome. These are really cool. I really, man. How long was the project about? Like, how long from like when you guys first started to if being done? Um, I think they, Robert and Dice, had been working on it before anybody else. So, I think full production, maybe, like. I want to say six months or so, but that's maybe that's only how long like the painters and the animators were on it, and then post was much longer. Uh, for being an 18 minute short, uh, it was done really quickly, um, and for, for everybody having full time jobs. Oh yeah, that's intense. Wow. So these were done um, as announcements 
for the festivals that they were going to. So, um, so it was kind of fun. Uh, Robert and Dice were doing their, their announcements themselves, but they, I think they were, there were so many, like they had to have us do a couple of them. They said, just come up with anything you want, just make it cute, and have any, like the logo there, and say what festival it's for. So we came up with a couple of these. This was for the San Diego Film Festival. Uh, I just, like, I just imagined that they were riding on a tandem bike <laughs> on the beach. <laughs> Thought it would be cute. Yeah. Um, this was for the Budapest Analog Animation Festival. My, my, uh, I was inspired by Grand Budapest. Yeah, I was about to say <laughs> <laughs> the king <cake>, Mendels. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's pig. He would, he would. <laughs> eat at least three of those. <laughs> and this was for a uh, festival play in, in Portugal. Mm -hmm. um, Is there a way for, for people to view the Dam Keeper online now still? Or how can... Yeah. It's available on uh, on iTunes. Okay. And I think Amazon or um, yeah, I, I know it's on iTunes, and it's it's just like a couple dollars. But cool. So this, I thought it would be fun to show. This is the team. This is like the core paint and animation team. Um, so this is the group that we worked with. Uh, <laughs> most closely. And we had fun. Uh, we spent a lot of time in this tiny room together. Um, Robert Dice are on the right, and this is their booth last year at CTN. Robert and Dice are on the ends. And every, every like once a week, we would get up at 6 or 7 and do these still life paintings. Um, so we'd set up a still life with really natural lighting and study, I'll sit around and study this, this painting, um, well we paint and study this still life, or we'd go out to the marina and paint, uh, go plein air painting and paint the boats, mm -hmm. that a couple times, yeah, this is the uh, studio. Cool. Yeah. This is one from the marina. This is old. <laughs> this is like two, three years old, but nice. Yeah. What medium? Was that watercolor or just gouache? That I think was watercolor. Yeah, but I like painting with gouache now. Mhm. Mm I think I enjoyed that the most. Um. Yeah. What else? So then after that, uh, so that was a really great experience. I think I learned the most from, I learned so much from them. And I was lucky that I had another year in school. So I was able to really go back and apply everything that I learned and uh, mm -hmm. really build a portfolio. Um, and I think they really ingrained in me like the importance of studying, going out and uh, studying nature and doing these plein air paintings and still life paintings, and I still it's something I still uh, do a lot of. I I really try to paint every day, and I don't think I would have done that or been interested in doing that if I hadn't worked with them or studied with them. So, yeah, it was it was a really great experience. Would you say it's uh, really crucial to keep keep yourself sharp and with color and light? To, to constantly definitely. practice? Yes, definitely. I think uh, if you want to be able to paint like a scene with natural, realistic color or lighting, I think you have to be able to, like you have to go outside and paint often. Like study from real life, study from, it could be a, like a figure painting session or a still life like right in front of uh, you know, right in front of you. It just, it just has to be from life. I think it's crucial. Mm -hmm. As to your, um, 
your library to pull from, <laughs> your mental library. Mm -hmm. so, so after that, I, I went back to school and then uh, I went up to, I got an internship up in Portland at uh, Leica House. Oh, cool. Nice. That was, that was awesome, working on commercials. It was all in the commercial house. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that was super fun. I don't know if you've ever been to Portland. No, I haven't. I would like to. Yeah, it's, I think you'd <laughs> like it. It's a cool city. <laughs> <laughs> so this was for a commercial, or like? Oh, so this. Uh, yeah, I can't show any of that work from Leica House, mm -hmm. but. Um, I so I was there for a while and then I came back, moved down to LA, and then I started at Sony. Mm -hmm. So then I the first project at Sony was uh, Hotel Transylvania Two, and so these are from Hotel Transylvania. Oh, okay, <laughs> these are cool. <laughs> these are uh, designs for a billboard. Okay. Um, yeah. In the movie, they they go to California. The movie's out, so I can I can talk about it a little bit. But um, they go to California, and so they needed to have California type of ads on the streets. <laughs> mm, I see. <laughs> um, I know it doesn't seem like it fits with Hotel Transylvania. <laughs> yeah. Uh, So, this was my first assignment on Hotel Transylvania. Um, so for this one, Mike, Michael Kerinsky was the production designer, and he told me, I was so scared, I was so scared the first day, and he said, this is your first assignment, you have to paint this deer. Mm -hmm. um, so on Hotel T, I was a, a painter. At Sony, they separate the designers and the painters. From what I hear at other studios, they, they have, like, biz, biz dev artists do everything. So, and sometimes we'll do a little bit of design and paint, but usually it's very separate. Um, so for this one, he said, he gave me a, a drawing done by Andre Medina, mm -hmm. and uh, he said, okay, just paint it, paint it as if it's in going to be like in CG, like paint it, paint it as if as we see it, we want to see it like in CG. But this is going straight to the, you know, the texture, department and um, we need to see all of the detail in the materials. Um, I, was all, I was all scared and so I did a couple options like of the, face, the facial color patterns and different um, the spotting patterns and then he chose one and then I worked, worked that up um, and took it a little bit further and this is what I came up with. But um, yeah, I just remember being so scared, and our meetings were um, in a in a small room with our work projected on the walls, and the director either says yes or or no, like no, you need to fix this, or yeah, it looks good. Um, so it was like the most terrifying first day or first week, but I survived. <laughs> <laughs> makes you makes you tougher, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, how long did it take for you to paint this image? This one took about three days or so. Okay. Maybe. Uh, yeah. And then this one. So this is a this is a gag that they cut out of the movie. Um, <laughs> they. Oops. Let's see. 
So there was a gag written earlier. Uh, this, this raccoon, this little innocent raccoon, was Drac's close friend um, as when he was a kid. They were good buddies, and then something turns. I think that the raccoon becomes uh, possessed, and this is what the raccoon looks like when he's possessed. So <laughs> this was a fun one. <laughs> That's cool. So these oh. are... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go, oh, I was going to say, are you allowed to embellish any of the designs as you're painting these? So uh, so we'll be given a, a, a drawing, kind of a rough a sketch, and then we'll have to paint it. We'll be given notes like, we want the patterning to be uh, recognizably a raccoon, and we want the eyes to be red, and we want the, the tips of the ears to be white. So you you have a little bit of freedom in in how you how you take those notes. Like you can maybe have more of a like more of white on the ears, a little bit of a different type of a red. Um, like the stripes could be thicker. Mm -hmm. So you have a little bit of leeway, but it's most um, and sometimes sometimes they'll say come up with a color scheme for the whole raccoon, or come up with, we don't know what we want this character to be wearing, like come up with the the dress for this character. So there is a, some room for you to add your own, your own voice into it sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. It depends on the assignment. I see. This was a uh, lighting key for a sequence called Pup Party. So, um, there's a sequence in the movie where the, the wolf pups are having a birthday party outside of the hotel. And so this sequence, I did a lot of the design work for the props. The lanterns, I'll, I think I have them in here. I'll, we'll probably look at them. But um, So I did a lot of the design work for those. And then they said, well, we need to do the lighting key. So, <laughs> so the, the, yeah, I was given this... Uh, Color key by Aurelian Predal, who's an amazing color artist, and uh, I was told to work this up as a as a key that they would pass on to the lighting department. Mm -hmm. um, and this was the first time at Sony that I was given an assignment of like that was not a prop or a character, some kind of a whole theme. So that was kind of a fun thing for me. Mm -hmm. This is, so the one on the bottom is, uh, there's a, a gag where Invisible Man is teaching <laughs> a yoga class. Um, <laughs> So he, he's wearing a sweatband, and um, so I had to paint this yoga classroom. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Um, the lady on the left is, she's one of the local suburban housewives um, in, in California as Johnny and Mavis are going to California. So I had to, I was told for this one, design uh, her outfit, like she, she should be wearing a juicy jacket, like a velour jacket, and some yoga pants, and some matching shoes, of course, because she would wear shoes that don't match her jacket. <laughs> and I knew the exact type of person, so I said, I got it. <laughs> nice. Um, so, so this is the type of work that we do as a painter at Sony, like very... Um, very like focusing on materials and um, painted ambiently, like painted with a white light so that you can see the difference in materials um, instead of painted for color and lighting. Like this is very different from um, this. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Okay. 
Um, so that's the same deer, but that's, those are just more of the references on the left that they they were telling me to refer to. Mm -hmm. um, This was uh, so. This is Johnny's mom, and they there's a sequence in the movie where they go to they're they're at the wedding. So this I was told to paint. Uh, I was given some reference for this type of a dress and a sketch with this dress. Um, so I was told to paint paint her paint her dress like similarly to the reference and. Um, the painting of her was already finished, so I just had to paint the dress on top of her. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Johnny's sister, and uh, I believe, like for the models, or for the, um, the, they used Johnny's model for every member of his family, so <laughs> her face looks really creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I painted this, they told me, make her look very beige and boring, like paint her, I don't want anything to stand out, like everything should be beige, kind of bland, and I, I think I, I think she looks pretty boring, except for yeah. her creepy face. <laughs> I think you nailed it, <laughs> yeah. Um, the sister pickles. <laughs> I, this is my favorite assignment from the whole project. Uh, Mr. Pickles was cut out, but he was a he was a ghost cat of. Um, there was a couple. They were ghosts, the Lowenthal's, and they um, they had this cat, Mr. Pickles. And I'm not even sure, I think it was just the one, like a one gag uh, moment, but I just really enjoyed painting Mr. Pickles. <laughs> <laughs> he looks so, like, sad. <laughs> so scraggly. Like, his tail looks like it's been through a lot. <laughs> yeah. um, I just remember the notes were... Make him more, make him more sad, and make his fur more gray, like he's older. Like make him oh. like an old, old man. <laughs> yeah, I totally see that. <laughs> um, same as before. So these are some of the props from that pup party sequence. Um, table settings, balloons. These were the centerpieces, so they wanted, like, if you've ever been to a party and they have these cheesy uh, tin can candle holders, mm -hmm. like you put a candle inside and it flickers, so that's what those were. Um, so, so for something like this, even though like I was on the paint side of things, he would, Michael come, would come to me and say, we, we need this design. Can you, can you just design it and do paint kind of at the same time? So for some simple things like this, we wouldn't have them separated. Like we wouldn't have a designer and then a paint, paint after that. Um, it would be done at the same time. And these lanterns too. Mm, I see. So for these, you were, you were allowed to basically design them, right? Or as you went? Yes. Yeah, totally. Um, like they're they're kind of in the background. They just need something to work with uh, to build from. So and they need to know like the textures and the materials. But um, it's like it's not like a huge. It's not like a centerpiece or anything. So they don't really need to separate it, design and paint. It's kind of a waste of time. Gotcha. Um. So this was the raccoon that becomes possessed. 
It's so cute. Yeah. His eyes are just so huge. <laughs> I but, know. Um, I'm imagining his skull and me. <laughs> I just, yeah, his skull would be so crazy looking. Yeah. His little nose. <laughs> yeah. I wish oh. they kept that. I was so excited. But <laughs> this is Johnny's sister for the wedding. So, um, just so I did the paint of Johnny's sister in her regular clothes, and then changed her outfit for the wedding. So just did a repaint for of her dress. Mm -hmm. And that's that's all for hotel tea. Awesome. I was going to ask you a few questions that I wasn't able to ask you earlier. Um, yeah. Uh, what is the benefit of doing a master study um, for copying someone else's work or drawing? Um, I think you sh like, I think it's very helpful to study people, like artists that you admire. Um, so like a master study, by doing that, you kind of pick up on what what is successful in their painting. Um, and like the, like it's helpful to study, if somebody else is really good at color, like to study, just to copy and paint what they're doing. To copy it and try to make the same painting maybe not so helpful, but to really study it and to observe like how are they using this color? How are they using lighting to um, to like make this work? So I think it's helpful to like when you're doing these studies, like really pay attention to what decisions they're making and like why. Um, just really try to study like why why this, you think they're making this decision. Um, and this is helpful for composition, and um, I think it just adds to your your library. I really like doing film studies, mm -hmm. like film still paint, paint studies. Um, or is there because, a difference? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, what were we going to say? I was just going to say if there's a different set of benefits for painting from film studies. Um, I think, well, studying from other painters would be helpful. Like, you can kind of get into their head a little bit and study like the way that they're putting their brush strokes down and the way that they're choosing their colors. But in, uh, so that's from an art perspective, I think that's helpful. But just from like, if we're working in, if we're heading towards working in entertainment or film, I think it's helpful to study entertainment and film. So it's like for composition and for, for color themes and for, um, for lighting, I think it's great to study uh, film. Even if it's, you know, it's a black and white movie. It's different films have different, different, um, great things about them to study. But uh, yeah, I think you want to study what you hope to like work in. You know, we want to work in in, in film or an, an animation or entertainment. So study it so that you have more of the knowledge of what you hope to create yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it totally makes sense. Um, one, let's um, see I'll just let this play in the background. Is that a good idea? Yeah, that's good. Okay. We can talk about it a little bit. Um, one of the questions is asking about uh, your like study and work routine, and if you have any recommendations on what other exercises to try when plein air painting is not an option. Available option. Um, I think so. So exercises and uh, I, I really try to like through school. I thought it was really important to go to figure drawing. Um, I, I was a model coordinator for my animation club for a year, and so I went to figure drawing every every week, three times a week for a year. And I think that, I think figure drawing is so important. Um, 
even if you're not a character designer, uh, it helps in your like observational skills and figure drawing, like understanding the figure and weight and like balance. That will help your like your um, just your composition and like your uh, your drawing of trees and like anything organic in nature. Um, so figure drawing and uh, any observational studying or drawing. So going out to a coffee shop and sketching uh, people people's faces or doing like gestures of of um, people standing in line. I think just observation. So I don't really do so much sketching anymore. I used to a lot. Now I, I do observational painting. Um, but yeah, I think like if we want to work in creating worlds, like we want, if we're coming up with these worlds and like these these places and things that don't come from anywhere, like they don't make sense. So we need to pull from somewhere, and we need to have them based in reality. So I think it's important to go out and study from study reality, and so that way we can recreate it. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So so I try to paint every day at least for. 20 minutes or so, uh, or every other day, uh, quick, quick painting, um, or even if you can't paint or go sketching, even just like writing notes, looking around and observing and taking notes, like mm -hmm. oh the that color on the building there is very like very pink, or mm -hmm. and just observing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Just thinking about it like all the time. Yeah, there's like a way, uh, you just have to be, be observant, like a way of looking at the world so that you can put that into your own work. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Do you ever uh, uh, run into creative blocks and how do you keep it fresh? Um, all the time. Um, <laughs> so I think... It's important to, like, if you feel that coming on, like, you feel, uh, it's, it's hard working in, at a studio or an animation, at, at any, anything creative, because you're, you're doing that because you love it, but then you, you're doing it every day, so you get a little bit, it's natural to feel a little bit burnt out, but you can't because it's your job, so you have to, you're forced to, like, you have to just produce all the time, so I think like the second you start to feel that way, I think it's important to like refuel your your inspiration. So like mm -hmm. go out, go outside and go go see a movie, go to see like a, a music show, like go to the park and uh, just sit and or go play go play sports, go see your friends. Um, I like to go see music. I like to go um, see. I just like go to museums. Um, see other art that like makes me feel very humble. Like see, just see some really beautiful art. Right. Um, and that for me helps helps make me feel refreshed. Um, like not doing art, I think, is the most important thing. Just take a break from from creating, and then you'll feel refreshed. Yeah, that's that sounds good. That sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> we um, put so much pressure on ourselves, you know? Oh, yeah, totally. And then one last question. Um, it's a little off off topic, but um, do you, at any of the places that you have worked, were there any artists that worked off-site or over the Internet, or do they prefer artists to be on-site? Um, at Leica, they did. They had a lot of freelance artists, so um, they hired, sorry, this is like going crazy fast, um, they, yeah, they would have a lot of freelance artists that they would, they would work remotely, um, and they only had a few artists in, in-house, so uh, that was kind of, that was kind of cool, like, I think that, that was how they functioned, um, they worked better that way. But at Sony, they don't, I think they may have one or two that they work with uh, 
it's on a freelance basis, but everyone there works in-house for the most part. Because it kind of has, um, it's like just how, how they work, everyone, at least in the art department, um, they have meetings every day, and they're a big part of, uh, that's like a big part of how things come together, just by being there and talking with the director. Mm -hmm. um, but I think like a lot of smaller commercial studios that do a lot of freelance. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure about other feature studios. I think sometimes, like Aureli, Aurelian Pridal, our color artist on Hotel Transylvania, he worked um, remotely from France. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I think at, in feature you kind of have to be at a certain level to to get those gigs. <laughs> you know, it's like you have to be worth their trouble. Uh, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's kind of yeah. it's like harder for them to to do that. Right, right. Yeah. Cool. What was that pink color that you added to that bottle on the left? Was that just like the, the light going through it? Yeah, like on the on the shadow. Mm -hmm. Um. So this was a a still life on my desk last night. Mm -hmm. Um. The lighting was like really dark in the room, but the like the candle was casting a shadow. So this bottle on the left was pink. It has like kind of a pinky tint. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if it was the I think it was the light from the candle and the the wax was like kind of casting this pink glow through the pink bottle, mm -hmm. and it had this like kind of like a pinky glow on the white. My table there is white. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Gotcha. Very cool. So it's like a, yeah, it's like a passing through the bottle. Mm -hmm. When when you do these kinds of um, studies or quick uh, paintings, do you, what is your, like, intention with them? Or what is your, your focus? Um, for something like this, it would just be to study... Just like to study, so to learn, like how how does the lighting look in this situation? Like how is it affecting the the glass versus the the pen here? Like how is how does it bounce around? Like in illuminate that wax, that red wax. So it's like mostly just to study because I feel like something like this. If I were to just paint this from my head, I don't think I would get the colors right. Like this table is white, and I don't, I, I just like I don't think I would just know. I don't think I would know to paint that. So I, I do these studies, these studies to, to like get it in my mind that colors aren't always what you think they should be. Um, you know, it's like kind of just adds to your, uh, your library to pull from. Um, uh, yeah. I see. Cool. Like the more that you do these little studies, the the more the easier it will be to to like recreate some type of a lighting situation when you need to. Mm -hmm. And right. and when it's like from your mind, you know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. Um. But this is this is a quick one, and it's not fairly finished. But I just uh. But this is like how I would approach doing a, a plein air painting outside or like uh, any sort of a, an observational painting. So, but it's like, it's kind of mushy, but that's just how I would handle it. Right. <laughs> um, maybe. How long do you usually spend on those studies or the amount of time? Um, like anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour. Mm -hmm. Oops. Do you have um, any recommendations on reading materials for painting in color and light? Reading materials. Um, I really like 
James Gurney's book. Um, I think it's called, what's it called? It's called Color and Light. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a great, yeah, it's a great book. Yeah, that one, and um, I like oh, that's cool. uh, the ketchup. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, James Gurney's book, I actually, I read it like in college, and then I started reading it again recently, and it's really good. Um, that one, oh, there's another one, uh, Painting a la Prima. Uh, I'm so bad with these names, but it's something like Painting with Painting in a la Prima. And oh, Richard, Richard Schmidt? Yeah, Richard Schmidt, Richard Schmidt. It's really good. It talks a lot about, uh, like, the way, his is all, it's all traditional medium, but, like, the way that he thinks um, and explains what he's thinking is just so good. Um, he's an amazing painter, and he also has a book of landscape, just his paintings, that is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, so just to study the way that he paints, um, would be helpful. Yeah, those two I think are my favorite. Yeah, those are, those two are great books. It's it's like the closest thing to textbooks for us. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's funny, like I, you really have to study them. Like you, it's never like you're done reading them. You, you know, you read yeah. it once and it's like okay, got it. But then the next time you read it, you you pick up on a new layer of it. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. I didn't really get that last time. Yeah, and then the next so time true. it's different. <laughs> yeah, so true. Do you have any gesture drawings you could share? Oh. Gesture drawings. <laughs> That's awesome, too. Think. That's cool. Let me see. I haven't been to figure drawing for a while. No. We've got a couple. They're not, you know, it's been a while. But let me open. Nice. Um, so this is from uh, Center Stage Gallery in Burbank. Mm -hmm. They do drawing every Wednesday. Um, really great models um, with costumes and some music. It's like matching to the, the theme. It's really great. And they have free coffee and cookies, which is the best. <laughs> um, so this guy was like a cowboy. Um, yeah, I need to go. I need to go more. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, there are more. Just upside down. And this one, she had a like a fishing pole and these heels, and then she had this uh, like rain, I don't know what it was, but this like suit uh, for wading in the water, like this, mm -hmm. this like rubber suit, I don't know, it's, it was cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all from that folder, but yeah, I think it's, it, I really love figure drawing, like whenever I go, I, I feel really refreshed afterwards. I, I think I should do more of it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's great. Very cool. Well, we have about 10 minutes left, so if anybody wants to ask any more questions or Chrissy, if you want to address anything still, just letting you know. Okay. All right. Um, I'll, I'll just go through, I'll just put these on. Um, those gesture drawings that you, you showed us earlier, how long do you usually spend on one of those? Those were, I think those were maybe twos or fives. Okay. I, my favorite, like twos or, I think two, twos or fives, I think that's like a good amount to spend on just getting the, the action down or like the pose. Anything longer, um, it's like a different type of a drawing. Like that would just be more of a of a drawing. Like you can get the gesture down at first, but um, and my favorite my favorites are like five. I really like five minute drawings. Okay. Nice. 
That's really so, cool. I love. I really like that one. Thank you. These are. Uh, I lately I've been really getting into painting with my iPad. Um, so I. I mean, I, I say that it's really important to go out and do plein air paintings or studies, but I know it's kind of a hassle to like, get all your stuff together and get the paints and brushes. Yeah, so, it's, co it's, it's a commitment. Right? Yeah. It's like every, you do it every Sunday. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's like, oh, God, here we go again. But it feels good <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> it's like a workout. Like, you, yeah. you know you need to do it. But exactly. <laughs> good way to put it. But I... <laughs> An artist workout. I I just uh, I got this iPad and I figured like, I'm just gonna try it. I'm gonna try painting on it and see see how it goes. And I just uh, I just fit it in my purse and I don't need any brushes or water. Mm -hmm. And that it's like all I really care about is doing studies. Like I don't need to do any finished painting. So it's really perfect. And I just use my finger. Um, Oh wow! So cool. It's like super convenient. I just and I've been, I've had many, so it's really small. Mhm. Mm I think everyone should have an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So these are all done on the iPad, and you use your finger to paint all these. Yeah. Cool. Are you able to, are these like, there's no opacity, right? You're painting like directly, right? Yeah, the program is called Sketch Club. So there, it's, they have layers and there are brushes you can use. Oh, okay. But I really like, um, like they have bit layer types too, like multiply and, uh, but I just really like the, like the look and um, I like using the lasso tool uh, because I feel like, like, what's the point of going out and painting outside if you're just going to use it just like you would use Photoshop? Mm -hmm, right. You know, I kind of like the challenge of using only one tool and using 100% opacity and using my finger. I think it <laughs> helps me like, think, simplify things a lot. Yeah, I can totally see it in these. It's cool. How long do you spend on these studies? These? Anywhere from same like maybe 20 minutes to an hour. Mm -hmm. This was my first one. Uh, I was just trying to figure out if, I could, if it's even possible to paint that way. And I did this and I said, okay. I'm, I think I can, I, think I can like work on this. I think this could work. Um, yeah, and then since then I've done, I think I've done one every day since oh, a year wow. ago. Wow, awesome. That one was on my trip in Colorado, in the back of the car. Um, <laughs> It was just so beautiful. I wanted to capture it, but it was uh, it was kind of bumpy. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Very cool. I have one question here. How how did you yeah. how did you get in um how did you get visual as a job? Wait, hold on one second. Mm -hmm. How did you find and get a Sony visual development artist job? Um, like through the past two or so CTN expos. I don't know if you guys, if like anyone's been to CTN, but uh, uh, I had gone to the Sony booth and shown my portfolio uh, to um, to the recruiter. And then the past the, those two years, I said, "Oh, like let's keep in touch. Let's uh, let's talk, you know, in the future if anything comes up." And I said, "Okay." I was still in school, and then this the summer after I graduated, um, the recruiter called me. It was great timing. I was just moved down from from Portland. I just moved to LA, and she called me and said, "We have a 
we have a couple possible like jobs we're hiring for. We want you to come in and talk with um, Mike, Mike Kerensky, the production designer of Hotel T, and um, some other people. So, so I went in and, and talked with them and showed my portfolio. And I had just come from Leica, so I had a lot of new stuff. Um, and they said, yeah, like, let's, we want you to work on Hotel T as a painter. And I said, yeah, that sounds great. So um, that was really cool. And then I've been there, I've just been there ever since. Um, yeah, that's it. It was really, um, it felt kind of out of the blue. Like, I felt very really lucky. <laughs> awesome. But I think it's important to keep in touch with those people. You know, if you meet a recruiter or something, definitely keep in touch. That's, I think that's what, how it happened or why it happened. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. one last question. Uh, do you paint from light to dark or dark to light? Or it um, doesn't matter. I paint from big to small, like big shapes, big shapes and like background shapes to foreground and small shapes. So, but when I'm painting with real paint, like gouache, I would paint from, so the most saturated, I'm just going to like, like if I'm painting with this with real paint, I would paint the darkest spot, then the lightest spot, and then the most saturated spot. And then I would paint all everything around that until it comes together. But big shapes first. Does that make sense? Yes. Cool, cool. Very cool. Well, we're just about at the end. Um, is there anything else you wanted to say or before we close up? Um uh, I mean, like, thanks for having me. This is so exciting. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Yeah. Fun talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All righty. Well, thank you so much, everyone. And um, we're going to have uh, another one with uh, Shannon Beaumont in October. So we'll see you guys then. And uh, thank you so much, Chrissy, for showing you all your amazing work. It was Yeah, thank you. It was thank a pleasure. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All righty. Well, take care, everyone. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Okay, take care. <laughs>